That is crazy. Today I want to show you how I elevated my Harley and made it sound the way it should and gave it the audio treatment that it deserves. My name is Howard, welcome to the Headshot Rides channel where I give you everything motorcycle related all in one place, whether that's reviews, comparisons, installs just like this, the difference between stock parts and aftermarket parts, whole host of motorcycle content right here in one place. So if you like what I do, consider subscribing to the channel. Drop me a like on the video, man. Really appreciate that. Now I wanna show you how my Harley went from sounding like this. to sounding like this. And I'm gonna let Jay at Volunteer Audio take it away from here and tell you all the technical stuff. He's not gonna get too deep into it, but tell you what he's doing to my bike to get that sound. Because my biggest concern is, I just wanna be able to hear my music when I'm 60, 65 miles an hour. With the stock system, two speakers and the fairing, once you hit 60, 65, it's it's cranked all the way up anyways, and you can barely hear. Then you add a helmet, and it's even worse. Then you add a passenger for them, it's even worse for them, right? So uh, the audio really sucks on these bikes. And so I'm going to let Jay, Volunteer Audio, tell you what they're doing, and then I'll talk about the pros and cons as I see it. Let's let Jay take it away here. All right, so Howard's here for the same reason that most people are. Yeah. You, you listen to it, it sounds pretty good in the showroom, but you get heading down the highway, and with the engine noise, with the wind noise, it's really hard to make out your music. Yeah. So we're going to upgrade that substantially. First, we're going to take that factory GTS radio out. We're going to put it in the new Soundstream Reserve HDHU14SI. This is just an upgraded radio. Yeah. Much better EQ, better internals. It also does some really cool features, though, like custom gauges and some things you didn't have from the factory. Perfect. We're also good. It does Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well, like factory, but much easier because we don't have to go back to Harley and flash anything to get it to work. Okay. We're going to put a 2000 watt Hertz amplifier in. It's one that we put together here at Volunteer Audio, completely plug and play. No wiring is going to be cut or modified in the bike. This is going to make sure we maintain any warranties, whether you've got an aftermarket warranty or a factory warranty. Okay. We don't want to mess that up. Sure. We're going to do the Hertz SX165neo speakers or a drop in. Okay. Super, super loud, very, very clear. And in the back, we're going to add the SX690neo 6x9s and cut kits in the lids. This is going to give us some good mid bass, some rear fill. It's going to make it very, very loud. And that'll allow my wife to hear some of this too. <laughs> yeah, and so here's the warning. Yeah. It's going to be too loud. Okay. So All we're right, going to have perfect. to get it loud enough with our volume that okay. we can hear it. But if you go beyond that for a long time, yeah. it's going to be like you've been at a concert. You're going to start causing hearing damage. We don't want that. Okay. Okay. So, so, so we're going to go from basically not being able to hear it all at 60 plus to too loud, which is way better than what we have right now, for sure. Yeah, we can always turn it down and we want something that's louder than we need it. Yeah. Just like you want a bike that'll turn more RPMs than you're going to turn. Absolutely. Because we don't want to blow it up just to get to hear it. Right. But let's get the bike tore apart. Let's get cool. it put in and listen to it. Cool. Can't wait. A quick comparison of the speaker. So here's the factory speaker. Now this isn't the lowest end Harley speaker. This is the Boom Stage One. It's got the little tweeter to the side. But one thing we know for sure, all speakers have a magnet. That magnet controls the woofer and decides how much power it can handle. There's no magnetic properties to this thing at all. I don't even know how Harley made this work. Here's our new Hertz speaker. It's got a neodymium magnet on it. Extremely strong to the point that it will attach to our wall and hang by it. Pretty crazy how much more magnet is on this. It's neodymium, it's about 40 times stronger than strontium, which is what most speakers are made out of. But because it's so strong, it can still be small, fit in these pods with no modification at all. Hertz makes these specifically for the motorcycle, so it is a drop-in and it's gonna be completely waterproof too. Gotta get rid of this thing, it's junk.
So I was there for the entire install. Obviously, we were doing some camera work and stuff. And all in all, I wanted to see, like, how would this install go if you're being sent the system? Because one of their biggest things is they send it to you ready to go, right? Already set up. It's plug and play. I didn't see them cut a single wire. And that's one of their biggest claims of fame is that they can send it to you. And with very minimal support, you can install this thing, right? The hardest part I saw was doing the cut kits for the lids. And even those are really hard to mess up because the templates they give you. And not only that, one of the most vital things that Volunteer Audio offers is full installs on their YouTube channel. Now, you can also see one of the sound tests we did with my motorcycle over there as well, by the way. That's a that's a whole separate video, and it's actually really impressive. So, Volunteer Audio, I'll leave a link in the description to those guys as well. But if you get that system sent to you, you literally go to your YouTube channel, check out the install, and boom, you can follow along. Now, if you have additional questions, I saw them answer questions from customers that, that had them, right? They're not just going to leave you out there and say, all right, yeah, yeah, we're going to take your money and boom, that's it. So really awesome group of people. So I've, I, I was impressed on that part. The install, I don't know, I, it took four or five hours or something like that, but that's because we were filming, we were doing different location, you know, we were doing different camera angles, we ate lunch, and that was just Jay doing it by himself with everything else that, that, that we had going on. So it didn't take long at all. I imagine these guys can knock them out way quicker when they're not worried about, you know, doing cameras and stuff like that. The only thing I didn't get out of it was a free bike wash. I would have appreciated that because I really hate washing my bike. But speaking of washing my bike, I filled the pods up with water because I washed my bike, right? I did it, okay? And I filled those things all the way up. And that's something I had to make sure would not happen because I carry camera equipment. I mean, regardless what you carry, you don't want your stuff getting wet, right? So that was impressive to see. As full as those things were, just a little stream of water, nothing that a simple rag, just boom, get it out of there, you're good to go. So I feel very good about putting my stuff in here. Actually, we took a trip to Myrtle Beach Bike Week and it rained, you know, for a day and I had no quorums, no issues leaving my camera stuff in my bags because I know they are pretty much as waterproof as you can get. Uh, this sound stream system, so obviously they swapped the Boom GTS out, which is a pretty decent head unit in and of itself. This one right here, though, gives you so much more information, dude. You have, you know, twist grip, you have speedometer, tachometer, you have different colors, you have customizable things that you can put on there. Hell, I think you can even do pictures and stuff. I don't even know that I've scratched the surface on what you can do with this thing. Obviously, if you have TPMS sensors, um, alarms, cameras, there's so much you can do with this. It basically jailbreaks your entire system, right? And gives you a really nice display. Now, one thing I did notice is I don't know if, if the uh, anti-glare is as good on this screen as some of the others because when the sun is beaming down on it, it is kind of hard to see. But one feature I did get that is a huge bonus is a mute button. So, you know, with the stock Harley system, at least it's been like this on the 2020s and 2021s that I know of, you just have to turn the volume all the way down. On this one, you hold it for a couple of seconds, boom, it's muted, you're good to go. All in all, man, I am super happy with the results of this system and what they did, man. I think it is a crazy difference, a crazy sound difference from the stock sound at 60 miles an hour. One thing about this system though, and what you gotta realize, is that there's only really one way to listen to this thing. And it's all the way up. Oh, so if I turn it down. I had an alteration. Let me show you the other side before my transition. Four notches. Turn it down halfway. Nope. I can barely hear something, but I can't make out the words. So you got to turn it up all the way in order to hear on on this system. So abruptly on me I can't discern. Didn't realize I was so close to the fire. Can't get burned. 
to the sound at 80 miles an hour. Holy crap. And that's not even all the way up. What you'll notice is like the clarity of the sound never breaks and never distorts even all the way up the clarity is still there now one issue i do kind of have with this is you're not going to hear much bass and i don't know if that's just specifically a motorcycle thing it could have been with the way it's tuned because he basically you know tuned this thing and set it up for country music that's what i listen to most of the time i listen to some rock and i do listen to some rap occasionally too um and I can hear a decent amount of bass when the bike is standing still, but as soon as I start moving, there's not a whole lot of bass to be heard. Again, this could just be a motorcycle thing. The, 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 the sound waves could be just disappearing. I'm not sure. I know they're doing a subwoofer kit uh, now for your saddlebags and stuff that you can easily remove and you know put back in or whatever, but uh, regardless... It could use an increase in bass, and this could just be a setting thing, uh, but I did notice that. Also, sometimes on the display itself, the touchscreen works, but it doesn't always pause your music the way that it should. So a couple of minor complaints for an overall badass system, dude. They did a fantastic job. Awesome group of people, dude, and I am super happy that I was able to connect with these guys. So again, I'm going to leave a link to their YouTube channel. I'll leave a link to their website. If you want to check this system out, man, and you decide to get one, tell them that I sent you, dude. They supported us in allowing me to show this system to you. We're super hospitable, and I'd like to show them support, too. If you're going to buy one of these things, just say, hey, heck, I sent you. That's all you got to say, man. Big thanks to you guys. If you have one of these systems and you've been using it, I'd love to hear your feedback as well. Thank you to every single one of you that supports my channel. If you want to support me further, you can do that on Patreon. We're looking for our first 10 patrons to the channel, man. Some cool perks, tier rewards, early access, exclusive content, all that kind of stuff. We're starting to build it up, man. So come join an awesome community. Big thanks again. See you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.